Picture this, it's the 8th century BC, a time when civilizations are emerging and a small settlement is taking root on the banks of the Tiber River. This is more than just an ordinary settlement, this is the dawn of Rome, a city destined to become an empire that will shape the course of history. Our tale begins with a legend. Twin brothers, Romulus and Remus, sons of the god Mars and a Vestal Virgin, are abandoned as infants. They are found and raised by a she-wolf, a story as mythical as the city they would found. As they grow they decide to establish a city, yet, disagreement ensues over the location. In the end Romulus prevails but at a heavy price. He kills his brother Remus and thus Rome is born out of fratricide. A dark beginning but one that foreshadows the city's tumultuous future. Romulus becomes the first king of Rome, and his reign marks the beginning of the rule of the Seven Kings. These monarchs, each with their unique contributions, lay the groundwork for the future Rome. They establish religious institutions, social structures and even the Roman calendar. Yet the rule of the kings is not to last. A dramatic turn of events in 509 BC changes the course of Roman history. The last king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, is overthrown following a scandal involving his son. The outraged Roman populace, no longer willing to put up with the tyranny of kings, decide to take control. They establish a new form of government, a republic. Power is now in the hands of the people, or more accurately, the patricians, the aristocratic class. The republic is governed by two consuls, elected annually by the citizens. The establishment of the Roman Republic marks a significant shift from monarchy to a form of democracy, albeit an imperfect one. Thus, a republic was born, setting the stage for an empire that would reshape the world. But this is just the beginning. The tale of Rome is filled with intrigue, power struggles and conquests. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the history of this fascinating city. Fast forward to 509 BC. The last king is overthrown and the Roman Republic is established. This period marked a radical shift in Rome's political landscape. From the rule of kings, we now move to a system where power was shared among various political bodies. The most significant was the Senate, a prestigious gathering of Rome's elite, typically composed of 200 to 300 men. They were the primary advisory body to the consuls, the two annually elected heads of the Republic. Notably, the Senate wasn't just an advisory body, they held substantial influence over public policy and governance. Then we have the popular assemblies, where Rome citizens congregated to vote on laws and elect officials. This was a platform for the common Roman citizen to express their political voice, albeit with limitations. Now let's talk about Rome's expansion during the Republic era. It was a time of massive growth, with Rome's dominion spreading far and wide. The Punic Wars, a series of three wars fought between Rome and Carthage, were particularly significant. By the end of the Third Punic War, Rome had effectively wiped Carthage off the map and emerged as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. Following the Punic Wars, Rome continued to extend its reach, conquering Greece, Asia Minor, and Egypt. By the close of the Republic era, Rome had solidified its control over the entire Mediterranean Sea, an area they affectionately referred to as Mare Nostrum or Our Sea. However, this rapid expansion was not without its consequences. As Rome grew, so did its wealth, and with wealth came corruption, social inequality, and political infighting. The Republic was not without its problems, and these would eventually lead to its downfall. The seeds of the Republic's downfall were sown within its very structure. The Roman Republic, once a beacon of democratic principles and military prowess, was not immune to the ravages of time and internal strife. As we peel back the layers of history, the social and political conflicts of the late Republic emerge, casting long shadows over its eventual downfall. Among the first to challenge the existing order were the Gracchus brothers. Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus, tribunes of the plebs, sought to redistribute wealth and land in Rome, challenging the entrenched powers of the aristocracy. Their attempts at reform, however, were met with resistance and ultimately, violent ends. Their deaths marked a turning point, signaling that the Republic's political discourse could and would be settled by force. As the stability of the Republic waned, new figures rose to prominence, chief among them was Gaius Marius. Marius, a military reformer and consul of Rome, revolutionized the Roman army, but his rise to power ignited a dangerous precedent. The bond between general and soldier grew stronger than the allegiance to the Republic, thus planting the seeds for future military dictators. The rise of Lucius Cornelius Sulla, a cunning and ruthless politician, only exacerbated the Republic's woes. 
Sulla's march on Rome and his subsequent dictatorship demonstrated the fragility of the Republic's institutions. His reign of terror purged the senatorial ranks and instilled fear, setting the stage for the end of the Republic. Amidst the chaos and power struggles, the First Triumvirate emerged, an uneasy alliance between Julius Caesar, Pompey the Great, and Crassus. This political alliance, however, was not to last. Crassus's death and the escalating rivalry between Caesar and Pompey tore the Triumvirate apart, plunging Rome into civil war. As the Republic crumbled, one man seized the opportunity to rise to power. The stage was set for the rise of Julius Caesar, a transition that would forever change the course of Roman history. The fall of the Republic was not a sudden collapse but a gradual degradation, a product of social strife, political ambition, and the erosion of its founding principles. Enter Julius Caesar, a man whose ambition would change Rome forever. Born into a noble family, Caesar quickly climbed the political ladder, utilizing his charisma, military prowess, and strategic alliances. His rise to power was unprecedented, seizing control during a time of civil unrest and redefining the landscape of Roman politics. Caesar's dictatorship, though short-lived, was impactful. He initiated a series of reforms aimed at addressing Rome's most pressing issues. He extended citizenship to many residents of far-off regions of the empire, restructured the debt laws and most notably, introduced the Julian calendar, which is still in use today. His actions were revolutionary, reshaping Rome and its empire in ways that still echo through time. Yet his rule was not without controversy. His relentless ambition and consolidation of power stirred fear among the Senate, leading to the infamous Ides of March. On that fateful day Caesar was assassinated, stabbed 23 times in the Roman Senate by those who saw him as a tyrant, a threat to the Republic's traditions and values. However, Caesar's death did not bring about the restoration of the Republic as the conspirators had hoped. Instead, it sparked a power struggle that would plunge Rome into further chaos. His adopted heir Octavian and his close ally Mark Antony would wage a bitter war for control, tearing Rome apart once more. In the end, it was Caesar's legacy that would have the most lasting impact. His reforms had set the stage for a new kind of governance, and his death had exposed the fragility of the Republic. The old ways of Rome were no more, and in their place arose an empire with an emperor at its helm. But Caesar's death was not the end, instead, it marked the beginning of a new era. In the aftermath of Caesar's death, his adopted heir Octavian emerged victorious. The power vacuum left by the demise of the great Julius Caesar was a ripe environment for political maneuvering. Octavian, Caesar's adopted son and heir, found himself in a prime position, but he was not alone in his ambitions. Marcus Antonius, better known as Mark Antony, and Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, joined Octavian, forming a political alliance known as the Second Triumvirate. This triumvirate however was not meant to last. Tensions between Octavian and Mark Antony escalated, culminating in the legendary Battle of Actium in 31 BC. This naval engagement off the coast of Greece was more than a military conflict, it was a definitive moment in Roman history. Octavian's forces under the command of his general Agrippa, triumphed over Mark Antony and his ally the Egyptian Queen Cleopatra. The victory was absolute, and with it, Octavian became the unrivaled power in Rome. But he was not content with mere power. He sought to reshape Rome itself. Octavian understood that the Republic was no more. The old ways were gone. But he also knew that Rome needed stability, a sense of continuity. So he presented himself not as a king, but as a princeps, the first citizen. In 27 BC, the Senate bestowed upon him the title of Augustus, the revered one. Augustus carefully balanced his role. He maintained the illusion of the Republic while holding absolute power. He implemented reforms, built roads and expanded the empire, ushering in a period of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana. Augustus's reign marked a significant shift in Rome's history. He was not merely a successor to Caesar. He was the architect of a new Rome, a Rome that was an empire in all but name. He set the stage for emperors to come for the grandeur, the glory and the infamy that was the Roman Empire. And so the Roman Empire was born, built on the foundations of the fallen Republic. Under Augustus, a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity began, known as the Pax Romana. The Pax Romana, or Roman peace, was a time when Rome experienced relative tranquility, stretching from the reign of Augustus in 27 BC to the death of Marcus Aurelius in 180 AD. During this era Rome saw the peak of its power and influence. The empire expanded its borders, culture flourished and the economy thrived. 
The Pax Romana was a golden age, a time when Rome was a beacon of civilization amidst the chaos of the world. Under the rule of the five good emperors, Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus Pius, and Marcus Aurelius, the empire was marked by prosperity, stability, and a sense of justice. These emperors, unlike some of their predecessors, were selected not by birthright but by virtue and capability. They ruled not with an iron fist, but with wisdom and fairness. In this period, the empire saw significant advancements in architecture, literature, and philosophy. The Romans built grand structures like the Colosseum, the Pantheon, and the aqueduct's feats of engineering that still stand today. Literary figures like Virgil and Ovid penned works that would become timeless classics. Philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius left their mark on Stoicism, shaping the way we think about ethics and morality. But the Pax Romana wasn't just about prosperity and progress, it was also about peace. Rome's vast military might was used not for conquest, but for maintaining stability. The frontiers were fortified keeping the empire safe from external threats. Inside the borders law and order prevailed. The Pax Romana was a time when Rome was a place of safety and security. Yet, even this golden age had its challenges. As the empire grew, so did its complexity. Maintaining peace, managing diversity, and addressing economic disparities were constant struggles. But in facing these challenges, Rome demonstrated its strength and resilience. Thus, the Roman Empire reached its zenith, a beacon of civilization in a turbulent world. The rise of the Roman Empire is a tale of ambition, conflict, and transformation. We embarked on this journey starting from the dawn of Rome, a time when it was merely a small settlement on the banks of the Tiber River a city that would transform into a republic marking the start of a new era. The Roman Republic, a time of burgeoning democracy, saw the establishment of checks and balances, the Senate and the rule of law. It was also a time of social and political upheaval, as the plebeians struggled for rights and recognition. Yet the very system that allowed Rome to flourish also planted the seeds of its downfall. The fall of the Republic, a period marked by civil wars and power struggles, led to the rise of one of history's most renowned figures, Julius Caesar. Caesar's reign, while short-lived, forever changed the course of Roman history. His assassination marked the end of the Republic and set the stage for the rise of Augustus. Augustus, Rome's first emperor, ushered in a new era of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana. Under his rule, Rome expanded its borders, built monumental structures, and solidified its cultural identity. It was during this time that Rome truly became an empire, reaching the zenith of its power and influence. The Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and stability, was a testament to the administrative capabilities of the Roman Empire. It was a time when Rome's dominion expanded far and wide, its culture permeated throughout Europe, and its legal and political systems laid the groundwork for Western civilization. And so, from a small settlement on the Tiber River, Rome grew to dominate the known world, leaving a legacy that continues to shape our world today. From the foundation of a city, to the rise of an empire, the story of Rome is a testament to human ambition, resilience, and the transformative power of civilization.